Hi, I'm Jason Inman and I like to read comic books and that's why this week I decided to tell you about one of my favorite series that is being published today. It's an indie comic book by the name of The Bunker by Josh Fialkoff and Joe Infernari. It was just collected its first four issues into a trade by Oni Press. This is a book that you should definitely be reading and here is five reasons why you should. Number one, The Bunker is like the best TV series that is not currently on the air. The basic story is this. On their way to bury a time capsule, there are five friends. You got Grady, Heidi, Natasha, Daniel, and Billy, and they find a metal bunker buried deep in the woods. Inside, they find letters, letters written to themselves from the future. These letters tell themselves they will destroy the world. These group, this friend, their friendship will destroy the world. This is an amazing premise. Imagine yourself in this situation. What would you do if you found a letter from yourself from the future saying that you were going to destroy the world? Your mind would explode. Would you, you would always be wondering, should I do this or should I do that? Or does doing this lead to that that leads to the destruction in the future? What do I do? That premise itself creates such amazing conflict and great storytelling possibilities. This central mystery of the bunker is what makes it so appealing. It's what makes it appeal to myself as a reader and what should make itself appeal to you. It's why it comes off like a great television show because every month you're reading a new issue, every month you get a new answer, and every month you discover some new factoid about one of the characters, which leads us into reason number two. This book contains very real characters. All of the characters in the book come off as very real and distinct people. And there's one simple reason for that because we get to see them at the beginning of their adulthood and at the end. We get to see them when they just left college and when they have destroyed the world and they've lived through the end of the world. There's Daniel who has to constantly live up to the great legacy left by his father who will eventually destroy the world. There's Natasha, the builder, an engineer who will one day become the first lady of the United States. There's Heidi who has a secret from her childhood that will haunt her. There's Grady who will soon become the president of the United States, the de facto leader and probably the grossest character in the book. And then there's Billy, the passionate one who wants to figure out this mystery. This book is 100% about how each of these characters react to the letters and how these letters affect their relationships with each other. It's because we get to feel every distinct relationship and how they impact upon each other that makes this book such a great read. Number three, The Bunker is a time travel mystery that doesn't give you a headache. The time travel premise of The Bunker is very similar. Only one thing travels through time, knowledge, as far as we know. Anyways, there could be other time travelers out there, but we don't know. So far, all that's traveled through time is the bunker itself and the letters. And that makes this a very simple premise. There's no cross-pollinization between the two timelines. There's just the timeline in the present and the timeline of the future. And that's it. And we get to jump back and forth between the two. And the book has very simple captions that tell you the years in the future so you can't get lost. And if you wanted to make your own distinct timeline, you very simply could. Now, a big mystery so far in the book is how does the bunker have the ability to time travel if it's only like from 30 or 40 years in the future? Now, that does seem like quite a Star Trek jump in technology, I agree. But that's not really that important to the story. It's a little bit of the MacGuffin. I assume that we will eventually learn that Fialkov will tell us the mystery of where the bunker came, became, had the ability to travel through time. But right now, that's not important to the story because the bunker right now is an action story where the only action is how the characters interact with each other. It's all emotional action. Number four, the bunker has amazing haunting art. Joe Infinari does an amazing job with the pencils of the book. And not only that, he's the letterer, man. His pencils are very stylized, but they capture this crazy line work that gives it a very realistic feel. There's some etchiness to these lines, and it looks kind of real. Everything looks lived in. Everything looks dirty. Kind of like George Lucas's Star Wars, how every ship always had like a dirt grind on it. That's the way the bunker feels. Every character's eyes have this emotion and this worriedness in all of their panels, which actually helps heighten the tension and makes it feel very real because all of these characters would be constantly worried about what's going on. Combine this art with the great emotional dynamics and all these characters pop off the page. Number five, they did it themselves. Last year, Josh Fialkoff and Joe Infinari 
published the first issue of The Bunger to Comixology on their own. They did it as, I believe, five distinct chapters. And they didn't do it through a comic book company, they just put it out on their own. They believed in the story so much, and the product so much, they decided to go it alone, like a Ronin. And do you know what happened? It became one of Comixology's top selling books at the time. So much so that Oni Press was like, let us in on that action. We'll publish The Bunker. You should have told us about this. And now through Oni Press, The Bunker is getting to get a full release. And I assume we will get probably six or seven trade paperbacks. They'll probably go like 30, 60 issues. Let's hope, cross our fingers. And you have to admire comic book creators that believe in their story so strongly that they're willing to go it alone, that they're willing to put their own money, their own sweat, their own tears into the story. And I can tell you what, when you are reading this book, you can see the passion in it. You can see the care that is put into each of these pages. You can tell because they were 100% willing to do it themselves without being paid just to do it and it's paid off. It's really paid off. And those are my reasons for why The Bunker is one of the best comic books being published out there and why you should buy it. The first four issues have been collected into a nice handy dandy trade from Oni Press. Uh, you can go to onipress.com, find it there, and I'm sure you can find all the issues of The Bunker on Comicsology. Go read this book. Josh Fialkov and Joe Infernari are doing some amazing work. It is one of the best independent comic books out there. And that's it. That's my choice for an independent comic book that you should be reading. As always, you can go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. If you like this show and you like some of my indie spotlights, well, you should go to Patreon.com slash Jawan. There's some quick and easy and some great reward levels that will help support the show, help me buy some more great comic books like The Bunker, and uh, uh, will give you a nice little geeky reward back to yourself. Support me, and you support the show, and I support you. It's all geeks loving each other. As always, let me know in the comments what comic books you would like me to review next week and in the future, and I will respond in kind. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to favorite, like, and subscribe. I'm Jason Inman. Be seeing you. And if anything ever happened to him, I don't know what I would do. <coughs> Gary. Gary. <coughs> I love you, Gary!